we have come to you even this morning. Because you beckon the Lord to come. We have come to you this morning because you called us. We believe you have something for us. That's why you called us. Leave a mark on us that cannot be erased. Place a mark on us that all men can see. And cause that the least in our company will become as strong as David. In Jesus' name. Now, with the few minutes I have this morning, I would want to lead us in a prayer. And I would like to draw that prayer from Exodus chapter 3. Now, if you know anything about all the things that we have begun to do, it will be quite familiar. You will be quite familiar with the motionings of the theme for this meeting um, at this particular time. So, it is on the strength of that that I want to raise a prayer this morning. Turn your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 3. Now, this is the beginning of the encounter that we started to speak on yesterday while we communicated the goodwill of God. And I hope that it is something that is a desire in your heart that over and above everything that you are doing for people, let it be my reality that there will be an extension of your goodwill in my direction. Because every time, every time a man made contact with God, God. It was because God was benevolent. It was because God showed him favor. And that first encounter that Moses had, we saw that it was after so many years of him walking aimlessly, so many years of him being lost in the cacophony of the mistakes or mistakes that he had made and that mistake as we saw it was brought to bear by a simple question his intended recipient intended recipients of his ministry gave to him who made you who made you i realized that he has not been made And I pray for you this morning that one of the things that you will be living this weekend with eh, is the making of God. That you see, there is how there is how a man will hold God by his loins and say, Until you bless me, I will not let you go. There is that intentionality, it's called impertinence whereby a person keeps coming, keeps coming. And if you have done business in the spirit for quite some time, you will realize that many times the product of a long prayer time is not um, a magnanimity of words. It's not multiplicity of vocabulary. That you, are, that you stay in the place of prayer is not because you have many things to say. And you know that Jesus actually warned us of that kind of praying. That there are certain people that will pray and they think that they, the fact that they pray with so many words is the reason with which God hears them. And Jesus says to be aware of those kinds of people. But if you have done business in the spirit, you will realize that there are certain junctions in the spirit where if you are sensitive to the movements of God in your life, by the movements of God, I mean the way God moves with you, you realize that there are certain junctions in the spirit 
that until certain keys, certain authorities are handed over to you, it will not do you well to move past that place. So for a period of two months, three months, your prayer point, sometimes nine months, your prayer points will be the same. Every time that people ask you, what should we pray for? It is the same thing that you are praying. It's the same thing that you are saying unto them. That is a function of a man who knows how God moves with him. Right? So, while we do business with God, it is important that you hold on to that thing. And that's my prayer for you this weekend. That if you have not been made yet, because there is that confusion that hovers around the place, people feel as if because you have entered scripture and you have seen what seems to look like the burden of the Lord, then you can run with it. The fact that you can run does not mean directly that you have a message to deliver. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are so many people that have run like that. And they ran so fast, they arrived. When they asked them, so what have you brought for us? It was obvious that they were not made. In Isaiah chapter 6, after that, Isaiah saw the aura of that I was around the presence of the Lord. The content of his speech was, woe is me, for I am undone. The word undone, you know, the way you cook and you, have you eaten yam that is undone? You know, externally it looks like it is done. But when you hit it, when, you, when your teeth hit it, you realize that what you saw was only an external thing, right? So externally speaking, the man carried the form, but deeper than what you could see externally, it was obvious that this man had not been made. And so it is my prayer that even if you find out with God that, okay, over and above everything that is going on, this is my own predicament. It is the fact that I am undone or I have not been made. That was how the man walked through for 40 years until God appeared to him and made him. Now, in Exodus chapter 3, let's take a look at that thing that happened to him. Because we are still looking at Turner's. Now, Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert. And came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Listen to me. All through the journey of the Israelites, there were certain, they, they had so many experiences with mountains. They had an experience with the Mount Sinai. Right? It was on Mount Sinai that God descended. It was on Mount Sinai that Moses um, collected the tokens of the covenant. But then, given the privilege of hindsight, Moses mentioned Horeb as the mountain of God. And you will see why in a moment of time. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. So I want to paint out a practical scenario from this, um, from this text. And so just stay with me because I want us um, to pray and to do that very, very emphatically. So the Bible says that the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. What 
caught the attention of Moses on this day was not the bush by itself. Because that bush had been there. It was not the fire by itself. Even though fire by itself has the ability to catch attention. Are you with me? It was not the bush by itself that caught his attention. It was not the fire by itself that caught his attention. In the words of Moses, he said, I will now turn aside to see this great sight. Why the bush burns and is not consumed. And see this great sight. Why is it that there is fire on this bush and the bush is not eaten up by this fire? That was the turning point for Moses. That there was fire upon this bush, yet the fire that was upon this bush was not consuming it. Okay? So, this was the point with which God got his attention. Because the Bible says that immediately God saw that he turned, God spake. And if God had the ability to speak all this while, I would have thought that God would have simply spoken. Are you with me? If God had the ability to speak all this while, God would have simply spoken. If there was how God, God did that before. You see, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, the Bible says, before the lamp of God would burn out, God came and stood and called unto Samuel. That was what turned him away from sleep. And he began to run towards his father in the Lord or the priest at the time. Are you with me? Uh -huh. So God could speak. If Moses was just going around the bush and he heard his name, Moses, Moses, that, was a, that could have been a valid toner. But on this day, what God chose to use to turn this man aside was a burning bush that was not consumed. And that was not consuming. And this made a whole lot of sense to Moses because God's communications will be easily understood. Because on the day Jesus was born, you would find out that the mode in which the shepherds in the field were being communicated to was different from the mode by which the wise men were being communicated to. Are, are you with me? The shepherds were being communicated to by an angel. They saw angels. But when it came to the wise men, their, their craft was astrology. It was normal for them to read the signs. And so, help me celebrate God's servant, Apostle Tolu Abola. All right. Thank you. So, it was their craft to read the constellations, to read the signs in heaven. If the shepherds in the field had seen a star, they would have interpreted it to be part of the lighting system of the night. I'm saying that when God communicates, when God wants to catch attention, he knows how to do it. He knows how to do it. And I'm saying to you that part of the ways that God catches the attention of men, because people will, there is a structure, there is a system in the earth to ensure that perpetually people are distracted from the workings of God. Perpetually. That unless God reaches out to them, people will be lost. And so God puts things in place. He puts structures in place to ensure that people, while they are moving through life, as if they are moving through life normally, there are those toners that he puts in place to ensure that men are turned unto him. In the case of Moses, it was a bush. And this bush was a bush that burnt and was not consumed. The natural way of things is that when bush is born, they are consumed. Isn't that so? But this, this, this man saw a bush that was burning and was not following the natural order. It, it's like something that we see in scripture. That have you not heard that the Lord God, the, there is no, um, um, he doesn't grow weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth um, um, power to the weak and to them that have no might, he increases strength. He says that they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagle, and the manifestation is that they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Because the natural order of things is that when you engage the flesh, the flesh will be reducing in power. Are you with me? When you see in Psalms 
that they go from strength to strength all day means Zion that appear before the Lord. That's not the natural order. When I was in secondary school, we used to do cross country. I don't know what led me to join that sport. I was a man of great feet. <laughs> but the natural order of things is that by the time you start the race, you realize it's not to be swift. There is a certain level of endurance that you need to put into the picture because as you run, you move from strength to weakness. Are you with me? Amen. At a point in one of those races, I had to take bike because <laughs> I, I can't forget that experience. We started the journey and then we were like, where is this thing going to end? We saw some bikes around, so somebody made the suggestion. Maybe we climb bike and reach. By the time we reached the bike place, they said that they have already crossed the line. That because the plan was that if that's this finish line, we'll stop bike somewhere there. Then we'll now run. Because we were sincere. When we came, that was not the plan, but we were sincere. We realized that the natural order is that you move from what? Strength to weakness. Men are turned aside not by the natural order. Because the natural order is pretty familiar. People are familiar with that order. The way God turned Moses aside was by a bush that burns but was not what? Consumed. So what is the implication of that? Now, in John's Gospel chapter 5, so let me give you one example of a burning bush. Because part of the things that we notice in, in Scripture is that God sets fire upon people. He places fire upon people. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, we see an example of that. How that, while they were in one accord in one place and they were praying, that they appeared from heaven, or they came a sound from heaven, and like a rushing mighty wind, and then cloven tongues of fire sat on each of them. That thing that happened to them that day was both symbolic and real. Are you with me? There was the literal fire that was upon their head. There was what it symbolized. But there was also a real effect that it had on them. That is how God lights people up. That by the time his fire sits upon you, by the time his fire sits upon a man, the intention of that fire is for it to be seen burning. However, it is not God's plan that his fire consumes the one that it bears. I hope you know that God is also a consuming fire. He has the ability to consume. He has the ability to consume. But in John's Gospel chapter 5, and maybe we should read from verse 35 John 5 and from verse 35 okay so give me maybe from verse 34 let me let me give you a, a context to it verse 34 but I receive not testimony from man but these things I say that ye might be saved talking about John verse 35 he was a burning and a shining light and ye were willing for a season to do what? To rejoice in his life. Now, this is the point of prayer. And I need to drum it into your spirit as quickly as possible. We see in Exodus chapter 3 that when Moses was going about his normal business, he came across a bush that was burning and was not consuming. And on the strength of what he saw, he said, I will turn aside to see this unnatural occurrence. How is it the case that this bush is burning and is not being consumed? The fire is not eating it up. How is it the case? How is it the case? Now, it was said of John that because the man was a burning and a shining light, people who will not naturally be attracted to his way of life, because John was weird. John was weird. John was like nothing of his day. There was nobody. Or, the man ate locust and wild honey. All the days of his life. That was, and he was dressed with camel's ghetto. That was how he was. The guy was, even in his day, the guy was weird. Yet, this weird guy that should naturally drive people away. You see the kind of pastor John was? If he was doing a service and people came, John would ask them, why are they coming? 
Who told you to flee the rats to come? You will say that, sir, you don't have, you are not a pastor. He said, I don't care. I came to be a witness. But you show fruits that are worthy of repentance. Yet, the cities were turned to this guy. The reason is because the Bible says he was a born and a shining light and you were willing. There is a technology in God by which he sets up burning bushes. Eh? Bushes that burn. I'm talking about men here. I'm talking about men. Men that he puts his hands upon and he sets them up as burning bushes. The intention of God while he sets these men up is to make them turn us by themselves. That when people will behold these men on the strength of what their eyes see, these men will be turned. Like, what exactly is going on here? And I tell you that there are so many, there are so many people who, are, who have lost their way. They are at the backside of the desert. They are in obscurity. They have made all the mistakes. I have, I have personally met people who have made more mistakes than a person can make in a lifetime. And many times it is done sincerely. Sometimes people have even given up on their life. The guy is just 22 and he's waiting to die because there is nothing again that is left for him. The technology is that this man will meet a burning bush. Are you with me? A person that God by his hand has set on fire so that when this person, when this person comes in contact with this bush, because there are many ways people can burn. I, I, I hope I hope you know what I'm talking about. I put up a picture um, one, a, a few days ago of my younger sister who just got married. And so there were a lot of comments. One of the comments said, sea waste. That guy is born. I hope you know that's a way to burn. I hope you know. Paul said that when you, you see, This, the solution is he has not sinned. Let him marry. If you find out that many times you see a sister with that size of waist, your legs begin to shake. You begin to sweat from your forehead. Bro, you are burning. And the solution to that quick burning is the fires of marriage. You see, marriage is a leveler. It will calm you down. And you realize that the only thing in this life is not extra cool. When, when we were when we were getting married, when we were um, dating, myself and my wife, we had a lot to talk about. Amazing. You could talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Then you wake up. So you realize that you slept while you were talking. After you get married, the discussion just finishes. Yeah. All of a sudden, you realize that well is costly. The price of rice is going up. Then there are people in church that need the Holy Ghost. All those kinds of things begin to come up. Marriage will calm you down. If you are born in, Paul is saying it is better that you do not fall into sin. Because, you see, listen to me. I do not recommend for any one of you that lust is the reason why you run into marriage. It will save you from hell. But there is another class you will enter in marriage. You will learn how to wait on God. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't, you're not getting it. Don't worry. You're not getting it. You see, God, <laughs> hmm. God has many ways to teach his children lessons. I pray he doesn't use marriage to teach you. Because that one is an everlasting course. By the time you are done learning the lesson, you cannot say, okay, I've graduated. Because you run, you run here. I have met people who have by themselves said, if this person does not have certain features, you can't see me on the altar with that kind of a person. God will grant your wish. Because of, are you getting what I'm saying? You know the Bible says of the Israelites that because of the hardness of their hearts, he handed them over to the desires of their hearts. He gave them the desires of their hearts because of how it, it, it was the same thing that happened when they were calling for a king in Saul. Are you with me? I am saying there are many ways to burn. There are many ways to burn. 
There is a certain kind of burning that will consume you. When Solomon said, can a man put fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burnt? There are certain fires that you should not play around because if you carry those fires, it will consume you. But there is a fire that the Lord by himself will set upon a man. And the intention for which he sets this fire is to act as toners. As toners. That when people come in contact with this one on whom the Lord has put his hand, they will say, let me turn aside to see. They came to meet a man. But in meeting a man, they heard the voice of the Lord. That's the kind of bush I want to become. That he stands and serves as a signpost. Are you with me? And as he comes, as he goes, he does his normal life. People look upon him and say, what manner of man is this? As they make contact with him, immediately they hear the voice of the Lord. I want to become that kind of a conduit. That's who I want to become. That's exactly what happens when God makes a man. So the question they asked Moses was, who made you? Who made you? When God makes people, God makes people, God makes people and makes them toners so that people merely by looking upon them, merely by interacting with them, merely by seeing the fires, they have the fervent in their spirit. You know, there were certain people like that. When I was in maybe 100 level or so, there was this sister I met in, on campus. Her sincerity with the Lord just, it just melted my heart. I, just because of that, I wanted to know God more. Just because of the way I saw, I saw her pray. She see my friend till today. When she prays, it's as if nobody else is there. I remember one of the days I just had a discussion with her. I had a discussion with her. We were just talking. And she was just saying things in passing. It was just because I was trying to form hard guy. I didn't want to cry in her presence because it felt as if I was far away from God. Is it possible for a person to be this close to God? So when we finished that discussion, I went to my room. I said, God, are you keeping malice with me? You see, that was because I met a toner. Are you getting what I'm saying? I met a toner that disrupted my... You see, that day, it was the beginning of many things for me. That day. I grew up in a Christian home, so it was normal to do the things of the Lord. But I knew that there was a way to do God. You know how you do something. Daniel said that, that um, the people that do know their God, that knowing God is what they do, there is how to do it. And my normal routine was, was interrupted. Those kinds of divine interruptions are made possible through the ministry, through the instrumentality of tunnels. My prayer tonight or this morning is that God will raise from amongst us Toners in human flesh. People that other people will come in contact with and they will be turned to the Lord. Kai! That when Jeremiah prayed and said, Turn us, O Lord, unto you. That God will have functionaries in our day. That will be the instrumentality by which people will look upon them and they will want to have something to do with God. It is a possibility. It's a possibility. We have met people that worked with Satan. And because they worked with Satan, people knew Satan was strong. But there is nothing that Satan can control that is close to the dimensions, to the possibilities that are available. When people meet you, do they have a, a desire and intention to fellowship with the one that dwells in light? Make me. Make me into a bush that burns. Make me into a bush that burns. Now when people come in contact with me, they will want to, to know what's going on here. And then you will have an excuse to speak. When God saw that he turned, maybe there is that little lady. Her name is Juliana. And God has been looking for an excuse to speak to her, to turn her to himself. 
all of a sudden God found you. And he accepts you as a burning bush. Instantly, you begin to burn. You begin to burn so brightly that Juliana is more than willing to rejoice in your light. See, how is it possible that this bush is burning? How is it possible that a young, a young mother who is breastfeeding can be so involved with God? What excuse do I have? And then they come to ask you, how is this possible? As that is going on, the, the, the voice of the Lord speaks to them. When God saw that he had turned, he spake unto him. I want you to make that a sincere prayer. You see, we are, we are experiencing a scarcity of donors in our day. God has not been able to find enough people that he can ride upon and turn a generation unto himself. But I am here. Make me. Make me. Ah. Uh, Ivala memelosa mama kideva mamona. Kabo ve le bras kabo ve biva na maites. Brante ve kapona. Brante ve kapona makata. E bras kabo ve te pila papona. Vike pete lo brante skabona. Ile ma baba bona ve skabona hai. Ele kabove sa mababa Si vidi fa mamones Sky ke profe la prata skabove na eles Vintona, vinto sambe Vile kapoda dais Ela bras kava bela frantas Para kapove le prantas kabano Vila kapoda dais 